Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Just before I introduce our, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister to you this evening, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of uh, the Prime Minister and his delegation to first of all acknowledge the Nungunwal people who are the traditional custodians of this land on which we are gathered and pay respects to the elders of the Nungunwal nation, both past and present. This afternoon, uh, it is my distinct privilege to introduce to you our uh, guest, the Honorable Prime Minister, Ratu Chusaya Porengi and Banyamurama. As uh, one of the many Fijians who has uh, trained with the Australian Defence Force over the years, I'm delighted to be with you all this afternoon to renew our connection and to salute the servicemen and women of Australia in this room and beyond who make up one of the best and most respected fighting forces in the world. I came to Australia seeking common ground on a number of issues, knowing as I have all my life that Fijians and Australians regard each other with genuine affection and respect. Nearly 100,000 Fijians have made their homes in Australia, uh, while more than 360,000 Australians visit Fiji every year. As uh, people, we see ourselves as friendly, down to earth, and uh, unpretentious. And we also share what the Aussies have always described as the principle of a fair go, the notion that no matter who you are or where you come from, we are all equal and deserve the same opportunities. Aside from the odd difference of opinion, uh, which is normal in the affairs of all nations, the only real conflict between us is, of course, on the sporting field. <laughs> Everyone knows that I'm a big supporter of the Wallabies. But uh, next Saturday, it'll be the first time I won't be cheering for the Wallabies. <laughs> and we Fijians are so sporting that we even allow some of our best players to play for the Australian team. <laughs> and beat us, though not very often, uh, if we can help it. Friends, I'm uh, honored to bring you the greetings of the Fijian people, and especially our own men and women in uniform, who have uh, wrecked up four decades of service to UN peacekeeping. Along with our leadership of the uh, global climate struggle through our presidency of COP23, this service to the world by a small nation unites our people in pride. They say Fiji punches above its weight, and with the support of our neighbors, we'll continue to do so at every opportunity. In our defense forces, we are brothers and sisters in arms who share the same values and many of the same traditions. In war and in peace over the years, we have stood shoulder to shoulder to defend those values. The right to liberty and freedom, the right to our national sovereignty, and the right of people everywhere to decide their own futures, to live in peace and build prosperous futures for themselves and their families. These values, along with respect of genuine democracy and the rule of law, are what bind the Fijian people and the Australian people together. We have fought and we will fight to protect those values. And we are something else. We are mates, good mates, we stand up for each other and come to each other's assistance in times of need. Like all mates, we sometimes have our differences. Uh, right now, we may have varied level of uh, ambition when it comes to confronting the threat of climate change. Uh, and I'll have more to say probably uh, on that in a moment. But uh, on February 20th, 2016, as you know, or most of you know, the strongest storm ever to have made landfall in the southern hemisphere, tropical cyclone Winston, slammed into Fiji, packing winds of more than 300 kilometers an hour. Winston killed 44 of our loved ones, destroyed thousands of homes and public infrastructure, and wiped out about one third of the value of our GDP overnight. As a nation, we were reeling and in shock. 
but within hours, Australian servicemen and women began to arrive to offer a helping hand. First aircraft carrying relief supplies, and then of course the wonderful crew of the relief ship HMS Canberra, who headed for the most devastated islands and communities, the new smiles and can-do attitude in the face of appalling loss and adversity lifted the spirits of our people. I have uh, publicly thanked the Australian government several times before for its prompt and generous support for Fiji in the aftermath of, uh, of Winston. Our other friends in the world were also there in force. Here in Canberra today, we strengthen our relationship even further. When your Prime Minister uh, Scott Morrison and I signed on behalf of our nations, our new Vuvale partnership to guide the direction of our relationship from now on. Vuvale, as you know, the choice of the Fijian word Vuvale is an appropriate one under the circumstances. It means family, people in the same household living under the same roof. And it implies a relationship stronger than a casual friendship or acquaintanceship which is what we wanted to stress on both sides. That our history, our geographical proximity and the extremely close person-to-person -person ties between Fijians and Australians make us more like family than friends. We all know that successful households, whether families, housemates, or in this case nations, only thrive when those living under the same roof are considered of each other when everyone acts in the collective interest of the household and not just their own, and when everyone recognizes each other's point of view and adopts an attitude of generosity, of spirit, and compromise. Plus a degree of frankness that might sometimes offend, but is essential to preserving any relationship. I understand that politics is the art of the possible. I understand the depth of feeling in coal-producing communities in Australia and the wider economic imperatives at state and federal level. But I also hope that we can eventually find more common ground in our Wu Valley uh, partnership on the climate issue. Because it is, a, it is the greatest threat to our security in the Pacific and for my own people and other Pacific Islanders, the impacts are really starting to bite. Not only extreme weather events like Winston, but the rising seas and changes to agriculture and fisheries that threaten our food uh, security and our livelihoods. The steady deterioration in the state of the only planet we have means that we all need to be far more ambitious in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that are causing global warming. Whether it is the superstorms uh, wreaking havoc across the Pacific and uh, the Caribbean, the desertification of arable farmland in Africa and the Mediterranean, or the rising seas lapping at the foreshores of coastal cities. The entire world is under threat. Millions of Australians, along with the Wu Valley in the Pacific, are already bearing the brunt of climate change. And as we have seen with the recent Australian bushfires, the ongoing drought, and the fact that some Australian cities and towns face severe water shortages, the outlook is worsening. We must all unite behind the science and the IPCC report that calls for the average global temperature to be kept at 1.5 degrees Celsius above that of the pre-industrial age. It is a matter of great regret that certain fossil fuel producers have insisted that the IPCC report not be included in the ongoing global climate negotiations. What has been removed from the table must be put back on the table because it is the only way that the world has any hope of achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050 and averting global catastrophe. We naturally want Australia to join us in stepping up our collective response to the climate threat. And this includes putting the IPCC report back on the agenda at COP25 in Chile in December. Fiji and other Pacific nations have already declared a crisis in our own region in the Kainaki II declaration arising from last month's meeting of the Pacific Islands Forum in Tuvalu. This was the strongest declaration from the PIF 
on climate and we appreciate Australia's support as a signatory to the declaration. I also again urge Australia to step up the leadership it is already providing in renewable energy investment and the research and development taking place across many aspects of it. I had a particular interest on this visit to see what Australia is doing to produce energy from waste and turn seawater into fresh water and I've seen projects in the last couple of days that would benefit Fiji and other Pacific nations. In uh, addition, Fiji is currently finalizing a comprehensive climate change act, which in part draws on much of Australia's experience in developing emission reduction projects. We very much look forward to, to learning from Australia's approach in this area, particularly in regard to reducing emissions and increasing carbon stocks through uh, better management of landscapes and soils. So we also seek Australia's support to help make these uh, advances available to us, along with other initiatives that can reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. Friends, I very much welcome the improvement in Fiji's relationship with Australia in recent times and look forward to new era of cooperation as we confront the challenges before us. We have a mutual interest in countering threats to national and regional security embodied in our new Bode de uh, Declaration, which I'm pleased to see and to say expands the concept of security to recognize climate change as the single greatest threat to the security, the livelihoods, and the well-being of our people. And we are closely cooperating in the fight against drugs and terrorism and transnational crime. We also look to Australia for support in a range of defense-related initiatives that will benefit Fiji and our Pacific Island Islanders, such as the joint redeployment of the Black Rock Peacekeeping and Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief Camp in Nandi. This facility, ladies and gentlemen, outside Nandi in Western Fiji, will strengthen our ability to contribute to peacekeeping and provide humanitarian assistance and disaster relief capability in the region. And we very much appreciate the substantial Australian contribution that is making it possible. Today is the last afternoon of my official visit, and I close by thanking the Australian government for its hospitality and the con consideration shown to me and my delegation. A special thanks to the protocol, the security and support teams at federal level, and New South Wales. And we like our level to those on the Fijian side who have made my visit a success, and the hundreds of Fijian Australians have also had the pleasure to meet on this visit. Some of them, I understand from the Prime Minister this morning, are overstairs. <laughs> Plus the Australians of other backgrounds have come up to say, good day, Frank, many of whom have brought their families to visit us over the years, and some of whom have made Fiji their second home. As a former military man, I'm especially pleased to be able to address this gathering and look forward to meeting as many of you as possible face to face. So thank you, Australia, for a wonderful visit. Please come and see us in Fiji. Our national airline, Fiji Airways, is about to take delivery of the first uh, Airbus uh, A350-900 in the region. It's a wonderful plane, uh, so please come across in the state-of-the-art comfort Enjoy our, enjoy our beautiful surrounding, surroundings and world famous Fijian hospitality. Uh, my line has always been, come home, bring your friends, bring your families, bring your children and grandchildren. Don't forget your MasterCard. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you all.